Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi Model B, which I've just purchased. So I'm basically going to get that up and running and um, see how that goes. So um, on the table I've got obviously the Raspberry Pi in its little box. I've already opened it, which is why it's not sealed anymore. It comes with a quick start guide. And here is the Pi itself in its anti-static bag. I can get it out. So um, it's the Model B, which has um, Ethernet on it, two USB ports, audio. It's got a composite video out, so you can plug it into an old-style TV. Uh, various expansion connectors. That's uh, power, which is micro USB or mini USB. I forget which one it is. And HDMI out for video, as well as the composite video. So on the table here, I've also got my monitor, which is actually a DVI monitor. So I've got an HDMI to DVI uh, cable. We'll also plug that into an old TV later as well with the Phono Stroke RCA socket. I've got a power supply um, with the correct connector on, which I bought on eBay specifically for using with a Raspberry Pi. It is a one amp, five volt adapter. Uh, Raspberry Pi say you should use at least 700 milliamps. The spec for USB is only half an amp, so you need to make sure you buy one that's rated at least 700 milliamps. Also have a keyboard and mouse, which are both USB. Got this tiny keyboard with Zippy written on it, which I've had for years. And also have an SD card. So none of these items are supplied with a Pi. Literally all you get is this in a box. So um, the SD card is actually quite a quick one. It's 200 speed, 30 megabytes per second card, 16 gig. Um, you can use pretty much any SD card, to be honest. Probably go for 8 gig or larger, so you've got space to install things. Um, it doesn't have to be a super flash fast branded one. There's plenty of cheap SD cards on eBay. So, um, the first thing we need to do is actually get the bootable image on this SD card, which is effectively um, replacing the hard drive. It has no hard drive. It uses the SD card to run the operating system and boot. So I'm going to go through that process of downloading the Linux operating system image, putting that on the SD card, and then we'll boot it up. So this is the Raspberry Pi website, raspberrypi.org. Um, there's a quick start guide, obviously, uh, on the first tab there, which tells you all the things I just told you about, what you can plug into it. There's also a uh, PDF quick start you can download and print. And there's a downloads page, which tells you lots of things. In fact, it says the minimum size you can use is 2 gig, but they recommend 4 gig or above. So, um, there are various downloads, there's also a beginners section in their forum, various other things. Now there's some various images to download. I'm going to be downloading the uh, Raspberry and Wheezy uh, distribution, which is the recommended one for starting. It has to be imaged on the SD card in a special way using Win32 Disk Imager if you're running Windows. I'm doing this on a Windows laptop. There's also um, Linux instructions if you have a Linux machine that you want to do the setup on. So, um, in fact, I've already done the direct download of the zip file, which I've put in this folder here, um, which comes down um, as a zip file. And I've also downloaded Win32 Disk Imager, which is also here. Um, now, there's a, a tool which tells you you should check the um, SHA1 hash which is this long string. So if you do the download from the torrent, um, you wanna be sure that you've got a consistent file without any corruptions in. So there's also a tool which you can download, which uh, basically it sort of does a parity check and checks the image is okay. So you know it's not corrupt and you're not gonna get the Pi crashing or anything like that. So we'll also go through that process. Although I've done the direct download, you're probably not gonna to see too many problems. So uh, you basically click on that um, it tells you the checksum again, and then it starts the download, it's very easy. And the instructions for checking the checksum are here, on Windows, when the page eventually loads, and Mac instructions. So you need this uh, utility SHA1 sum XE, which you also download at this link, but I've already downloaded that. And everything's in this folder, which is it's that utility there. Um, the other file is just a picture of my Raspberry Pi I just put on Facebook, which is, uh, in case you're wondering, what the extra file is. So, first of all, we need to extract the image. Uh, it's very easy on Windows. You just right-click on it and do Extract All, and decide where to put it, which is the same folder. 
So that's extracting a 1.8 gig file, which takes a few minutes. So that file is extracted to a folder of the same name. And in there is the single image file, which is 1.8 gig. I think the download was about 450 megs, so it's quite a lot of compression. Um, I'm gonna use the SHA1 sum program to verify the image now. Although as I've discovered, you actually need to verify the zip file you've downloaded once you've downloaded it, and not the actual image that you extract from it. Um, but it's very easy to do, so you just open up a command shell by typing CMD in there. Drag the SHA1 sum executable into there, and then drag in the zip file. So they all go onto one line, press enter, takes a few moments and then it should produce the um, the, ha the, uh, the hash basically of characters. So let's just check those are the same and I think they are. So it's that long string there. So yep, let it the same, B437 blah blah blah, C81. So it's unlikely to go wrong if you do a direct download as I say, but if you download it from a torrent it's well worth checking before trying to uh, run that image on your SD card. So the next thing is to actually get that on the SD card. And for that we need Win32 Disk Imager, which also needs extracting. And that produces a folder with a bunch of stuff in. There's an executable that you can just run. So let me just grab the SD card and open it. There we go, I'm just going to put that in the slot of my laptop. And obviously that's identified by Windows and if any luck it's blank. Now we can't simply just copy the image onto the SD card because it won't be bootable. It'd be the same as if you copy data to a CD-ROM instead of imaging it and then tried to boot an operating system and there'd be no boot files or any boot sector etc. So um, what we need to do is SD card is definitely H so the device is H and we need to open the image file which I'll just drill through um, all of my hard drive to find it now wherever I put that in Pi folder and it's that one and it's that and then I guess I'm going to click on write. Are you sure? Yes. 1%, 2%. So we'll just leave that to write. It looks like it's going to take a few moments. And then we can stick the card in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so my um, SD card was successfully flashed. Um, so we can insert that into the SD slot, which you'll find underneath. Um, it's keyed with one corner, so it only goes in in one direction, obviously terminals down. Just like putting an SD card into a camera. Um, obviously it sticks out now, which means this doesn't fit in the box. Oh no, it does fit in the box, although the, the box it comes with actually has a handy SD card holder. So there we are, that's good to know. Um, you could obviously 3D print or buy a custom case for it. So, uh, mouse and keyboard into the USB. That's the power. Now oh, we've got to plug in the video. Yeah, there's no power switch on this. You just plug it into the power. So that's our HDMI. Let's turn the monitor on. And we'll just plug that into uh, the power and then it should boot, hopefully. Now I've heard these can take quite a long time to boot. We've got a power light has come on. Oh no, it's booting straight away. And if you can see that, maybe I shouldn't shine a light on the screen, that'd be better. There we go. So I watched another video on this and it took several minutes to boot, but that's come up immediately. Obviously with the Raspberry Pi logo and it's booting Linux, which um, if you haven't booted Linux before, um, this is what it looks like. Lots of things say okay and everything looks good. So mounting file systems, there we go, and we're right into the Raspberry Pi config. So, um, let 
Enable SSH will be useful for connecting on the network. Um, start desktop or boot. Let's just see if I tab along, we'll just escape from that for now and see what happens. Something else going on on the bottom of the screen. And um, there we go, we've got a command prompt. So I'm wondering what happens if I type start x, which is to launch the graphical um, user interface on Linux, so called because x is the next letter in the alphabet from W, and W is what Windows, the letter Windows starts with, so they couldn't call it Windows, so they called it X going back quite a long time into Linux development. At some point I should have to log into this. Um, there we go, so yeah, got a mouse pointer. That came up pretty quick. So here's the graphical desktop um, that comes by default. It's got a start menu much like Windows, various things in. Um, Scratch, which is the educational programming language that they're um, promoting in schools, and Squeak, not sure what that is. Various accessories, um, image viewer and so on. Leafpad, which is a, a text editing program, a PDF reader. Uh, various um, browsers, including Midori, a bunch of other stuff. Um, Idle is uh, for coding in Python script. Yeah, it's also in the programming thing. Task Manager and a bunch of stuff for uh, customising. I found that's probably not going to work because it's HDMI. Uh, a bunch of stuff for the uh, customising the look and feel. So, uh, you know, much like the, the settings in Windows, in fact. So basically, um, a fully featured little computer with a desktop and all of that, and um, lots more applications that you can install as well. Right, so I'm on my lounge floor, um, and I've also got a big old TV here, which I'll move the light away from in a second. So, I've got um, a Cat5 cable that goes to my broadband router, which will just plug into the network. And I've got this, which is the uh, composite video that just goes in the front of the TV there. So if you don't have a monitor or an HDMI TV that's fine, you can use basically really old monitors and TVs and things to uh, to view this. Um, and then I just need to remember where the power connector is and we should be away again. So if I can select the right source on the TV There it goes. Just move this light out of the way, maybe we'll be able to see it. So, seems to work fine straight away with no problems at all. So, it's asking me for a login, which um, is written down somewhere. So, apparently, the username is pi by default. And the password is Raspberry. Let's just try Start X again. See what that looks like on the TV. Kind of big and a bit black and white. I if it's supposed to be black and white. Let me just flip. Right, so I've worked out why it was black and white on the TV, and that's because it's an old UK TV which uses PAL as a video standard, and the Pi is set by default to NTSC, which won't display properly. So a quick Google tells me there's a config file we can edit, which basically we can make it boot in PAL format instead. So having logged into the Pi, we need to switch to an admin user by doing sudo. Then we need to use a utility called nano, which is a text editor, and we need to edit slash boot slash config.txt um, that gives us the following text file and if you can see there where it says uncomposite uh, uncomments for composite pal and currently this sdtv mode equals two is commented out so we just need to remove the hash uh, it's control x to exit which then prompts us if we want to overwrite it 
and for the file name we can exit and if we just go back in and check that we can check that in fact it has saved it and it's still uncommented um, and we also need to shut it down properly to make sure that it does actually write it back to the file system or at least that's what you had to do in the old days but I'm going to do it anyway so again we need to use that as, uh, do that as sudo uh, shut down and halt now and then it should shut down and everything should effectively power off info. We'll now halt. Yep, there it goes. Gone. Right. So now let's boot that up on the TV and hopefully we should find that it's in colour. Right, so let's boot that up again, which we'll do just by plugging in the mains adapter, I guess. There we go. Not sure what that is. It wasn't plugged in properly. It is colour now though, we can see the colour Raspberry Pi. So that weird stuff on the screen was the composite video cable wasn't plugged in. Um, so now it's prompting me for the login. Let's just find the keyboard. Pi Raspberry, which I've typed wrong. There we go. Oops. Start X. With any luck, we should have the whole thing in colour. Great. So now, if I launch a web browser, uh, I didn't shut that down properly last time. Hooray, right. Just remembered my history. And there it is. So anyway, just a, a shorter video about Raspberry Pi. I may make some more, or you may see the Raspberry Pi featuring in some of my other projects which you can find on xrobots.co.uk such as Android movie props and things like R2-D2. See you next time, bye!